everyone, and welcome to another installment in the Be Part of the Music webinar series, Musical Gateway, Start a, a Start a Student, Change a Life. And that's what we're here to talk about tonight. I am so glad that you're here. And before we begin the actual webinar series, now would be a good time to look back in that it's been exactly one year since the pandemic hit and most schools shut down. And in that year, you have experienced some tremendous highs, I imagine. <clears throat> but I'm, more than that, you've probably experienced some tremendous lows, but more than anything, you're here. You survive. The, the, snow is fall, the snow is thawing, unless you live in Colorado, where they're expecting 98 I could leave my screen black, and right? You got someone who left their, their microphone on. All right. So the snow is thawing and the sun is coming out and spring is here and we're starting to see signs that the vaccine is taking hold, schools are reopening and that people are making, making plans for the future. So I hope that you approach this webinar with a sense of enthusiasm, a sense of, of energy and a sense of optimism because it is coming back and we're back. And I salute you, you, for getting through this and doing everything that you needed to do to help kids make music. So we want you to know that Be Part of the Music, we have done some of our best work in the last six months and we are super excited to share with you this latest offering because we think it's gonna make a real impact on your program by providing real solutions in real times to a real program. The way this thing started is I was sitting around the other day and I was talking to a teacher about, oh, the impact that they have and, and that how they change the life of a student. And it's so true, but it really hit me that as an elementary teacher, that maybe they don't always see that, that they may have the student for one, maybe two years. And that the real blossoming of that student, both as a musician and as a person, happens in middle school and in high school. And I thought back to my elementary music teacher who started me, a French horn professor named Larry Conrad. And I wondered, did he ever get to see what became of me? Did he ever know that I became a music teacher? Did he see that the day that he started me on percussion changed the trajectory of my life? And that the people that we need the most, the most in music education are the people who sometimes get the least credit and the least benefit. Now, pardon me if you've heard this story before, but this whole journey started for me uh, when I was volunteering in my son's classroom. Now, I spend about 200 days a year on the road in non-COVID years, and I try and be a good dad and I try and be involved. And one day I came home and my wife, who is just an incredible mother and president of the PTO and superwoman, uh, said, I signed you up to volunteer in our son's class. And I said, I'm not gonna volunteer in a class. You do enough volunteering for the both of us. And she said, nope, you're gonna volunteer in your son's kindergarten class. I said. I'm not going to find She goes, you are going to, yes, dear. Okay. So for a guy who's into marching band and like straight lines and, and the T's crowded and the, uh, the I's dotted, walking into a kindergarten classroom is like watching a scholastic books catalog throw up on every wall. There is every color, every cartoon character. And it, it like, if you have ADD, it, it, it's bad. So I walk in the room and, and I'm watching these kids mill about and do all these things. Now, if you've ever been in a kindergarten classroom, finding structure and organization in a kindergarten classroom is like finding a melody in a John Cage symphony. It's just not there. Well, at least if it's there, I can't seem to find it. So I'm teaching a reading, uh, a reading class and I'm, Billy won't sit down. And I say, Billy, you need to sit down. Now, I'm a man with a certain amount of experience and training in education. I shouldn't be able to handle a kindergarten study group of five kids. Billy won't sit down. I go, Billy, you need to sit down. He goes, no. I go, Billy, sit down. He goes, you're a poop face. And I literally looked at him and said, son, one day you will play the saxophone. You don't know this yet, but I do. Now sit down. So at the end of my hour and a half of indentured servitude or volunteerism, as my wife calls it, uh, my son comes up to me, he goes, dad, are you going to go to lunch with me? And I was like, no, no, that's not going to happen, son. And he goes, but dad, mom always goes to lunch with me. Translation, mom's a better parent than you. Well, anybody who's ever met me knows that's the case. So he begged and I thought, okay, what's 20 more minutes? So I start wandering uh, towards the lunchroom and, and I go in the lunchroom and it is, you think 30 kids in a contained classroom is chaos? The lunchroom is bedlam and all these little tables and all these little chairs and I fit in them, which was concerning to me, to be honest with you. And we sit down and now every kid is bombarding me with, can you do this? Can you do this? Can you do this? Can you do this? And it dawned on me, 
they don't know how to use their opposable thumbs yet. All these Lunchables and all these little milk things, they can't open them. And I was stunned by what a different world it is in elementary school. So at the end of lunchroom, my son comes up to me and goes, Dad, are you coming to my special? And I was, yes, yes, you are special, but I won't be going to that. He goes, but Dad, it's music. <laughs> music, I'm not, apps, are you coming? <laughs> oh, I'm going to go to this music class. I'm going to see what's going on in this school. So we start walking the music class and I start grilling my kindergarten son. Are they using fixed doll? Are they do? is it sulfates? Is it, uh, is it um, orf or kadai? I mean, are you using it? And he goes, dad, cotton balls and duck tails. And he puts his hand behind his back. <laughs> Excuse me. And I looked and I go, cotton balls and duck tails. Mouth closed, hands to yourself. And I thought, well, that would have been a handy little trick to know when I taught percussion class. So I cotton balls and ducktails, and I'm walking in a dutiful line to my class. And at exactly 11.58, the door swings open and out walks Emily Moran. And Emily Moran says, good morning. And they all sing back, good morning. She sings, are you ready to learn? They sing back, Yes, we're ready to learn. That was the interval of the day. And I thought, huh. She goes, now it's time to learn. And they all repeat back. Now it's time to learn. Quarter, quarter, eighth, eighth quarter. And they sprinted in. That was the rhythm of the day. And I walked into her and I go, is it okay if I observe? She goes, absolutely. She has no idea that I, I have music training and I was a music teacher. I'm just a parent of another kindergartner or grandparent, perhaps. You just don't know looking at me. So I go back there and they are covered down and dressed across in a line better than any marching band I ever had. Now, these are kindergartens who just called me poop face and came from Bedlam. But in music class, they are covered and dressed. And I'm like, what is going? And she goes, now it's time to sit. And they all go crisscross applesauce. Again, Quarter, quarter, eight, eight, quarter. So she starts talking about the objectives of the day. And I'm like, I'm watching this. I'm like, how is she doing this? And she goes, now it's time to stand. And they all pop up ready to stand. She starts playing the piano and they get in a circle and they're walking. And by the way, they're stomping on one and three. And she goes, agogic, boom, boom, boom. Passive, mm, two, mm, four, mm, two, mm, four. And I was like, what? And she goes, Forte, and they start stomping as hard as they can. She goes piano, and they're tiptoeing across the room. She says legato, and they start sliding their feet to and fro. She says pizzicato, and they start dancing like little elves. It was, I swear, it was the cutest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. And I'm like, how is she doing this? I don't understand. And, she, and literally, I stood there and I thought, she just taught more music theory in two and a half minutes to kindergartners than I taught in four years of high school. Taught more music theory in two and a half minutes to kindergartners than I taught in four years of high school. And that's when it hit me. I'm not a music educator. I never was and I never will be. I never taught a kid how to put their instrument together. They came to me knowing that. I never once taught a kid how to find middle C. They came to me knowing that. I was an ensemble conductor. She was a music educator. And they're two very different things. And it's not that one's better than the other, worse than the other, but they're very, very different. And I realized watching general music with a kindergarten class that I was seeing real music education in action. So now she goes, it, now it's time to sit. And they all sprint back and they go, Chris, cross applesauce. And they, again, they are covered down and dressed across in a perfect line. And I can't figure it out. My first thought is, is she using a taser? Like, I'm not judging. I'm not judging. We all got to do what we got to do to have structure in our classroom. But I couldn't see it. And then she gets out a coffee cup. I'll never forget. And she slams it on the top of the piano. I'm like, oh, I get it now. Scotch, she's drinking, makes total sense to me now. And then she gets out, she wasn't, she wasn't. She gets out popsicle sticks and she swizzles them around. Now she's playing the piano with her left hand, grabbing popsicle sticks with her right hand and going L4. Is this legato or pizzicato? B7, is this forte or piano? C2, is, and, 
And then it hit me. She had put numbers across the top of the room and she put letters across the side of the room. And my son knew he was an elf, an L4. She was using the pop school six to check for understanding to ensure that every child was called upon and there was accountability for every child. It was probably the finest evidence of teaching and learning I've ever seen in my 30 years in this profession. An elementary general music, and please, I don't make me sound surprised by this, but an elementary general music class taught by Emily Moran, she was twice the teacher I will ever be. And those kids will likely never remember her name. And that broke my heart a little bit. So I went up and I talked to her after the class. So I just got to tell you, uh, I was once a music educator and you are the finest teacher I've ever seen in my life. And I consider my child to be privileged to be in your class. I call it the upside down pyramid. Is that we sometimes think that we, we value ourselves as educators by the quality of our performing ensembles. Well, I'm a grade six, my group plays grade six literature, clearly, I'm a grade six teacher. Huh. Yeah. Uh, my ensemble's got a superior at festival last week. I think we all know that means I'm a superior teacher. My students, I had 13 students. I had 13 students make the all-state band. No, no, that's not true. The private lesson teacher had 13 students make the all-state band. Let's be clear about that. You know, that we think because we wear a tuxedo and get a standing ovation that we're somehow better or worthy of more applause than the person who plays Go Tell Aunt Rhody every single day. The person who, who puts up with, with the most mundane and repetitive of tasks. And, and it hit me that we do such a disservice to the people who are so important to us that the pyramid's completely flipped upside down. Because let's be clear, by the time they get to my top wind ensemble, I could put a monkey on that podium and they would sound pretty gosh darn good. Let's be clear. By the time they get to a top flight marching band that they could learn drill all by themselves with their section leaders and the drum major and I wouldn't need to be there. But without you, not only would they not be able to learn, there wouldn't be music. So a friend of mine, when I tell him this story, he says, be careful, that's not pejorative. But Albert Einstein is quoted as saying without, he's quoted, he didn't actually say this, but he did agree with it when it was attributed to him. Without the honeybee, all life on this planet would end within 14 years. That within 14 years, if it would end because if we didn't have the honeybee, we wouldn't be able to pollinate. If we wouldn't be able to pollinate the flowers, fruit wouldn't be able to happen. If fruit wouldn't be able to happen, half the Earth's um, mammal population, animal population would die. Without that, we would lose carnivores and it would trickle down. And elementary music teachers are the honeybee of music education. Without you, all music dies within 14 years. And yet we don't give you the credit. And more importantly, we don't give you the tools that you need to be successful. And I'll share this last thought with you. Tim called me this morning, Tim Hotsenizer, and, and he said, Scott, am I crazy? No one's talking about enrollment, but, but you guys. He goes, is, isn't that the number one thing we should be talking about? I said, yes, and guess what? There's no number two. It, that's it, number one. The only thing we should be talking about is how to get more kids involved in music. And the pandemic has only amplified that. So knowing that we do a disservice to you and knowing that even it be part of the music, we do webinars that aren't specifically geared to you. We decided it was time to write a program and do something just for you. Because when we help you, you change lives. You start students and you change lives. You just don't always get to see it. So I wanna share some stuff with you. So understanding that, that you are the honeybees of music education, we knew that we had to create something for you. We knew something special, something unique, but more importantly, something that would be useful, customizable, convenient, and complete. Everything we're about to share with you is completely 100% done for you and ready to use. But first, I want you to know the why we did this. We created this program, number one, because we wanted something that was granular and specific. Everything we're about to show you, we will tell you the exact day to do it, the exact way to do it, with the exact link to the materials to do it. The second thing we wanted to do is we wanted to provide a specific program for someone who starts beginners. Now, it could be middle school, but someone who starts beginners, and we wanted it to be step by step. And the third thing is we wanted to take this mass library of resources that we had, and we wanted to focus in only on the impactful resources for starting beginners. So we culled through everything, pulled out only the stuff that mattered to you so we could be granular specific and built a step-by-step -step plan just 
for you. So I want to share it with you now. This is our elementary gateway program, Start a Student, Change a Life. So we built this program and understanding this, this is completely customizable. You can use some of it. You can use all of it. You can do a little of it. We have three social media posts. You can do one. You can do 10. You can do 15. You can use what's relevant and meaningful for you. But I want to show you how that we built it. So the very first thing I want you to see is a checkbox over here. These checkboxes will help you manage everything that you're doing in an easily, easily organized, systemic, and sustainable way. The second thing is we wanted to give you a calendar. And we broke the calendar down into two sections, prep work that can be done a month in advance or an hour in advance, and then a day-by-day -day instructional sequence for recruiting kids. The third thing was the task. What do you need to do to get that done? And we were as, as specific as humanly possible. Coordinate with the homeroom teacher or the general room teacher about doing a presentation. Offer them extra credit. Offer the kids extra credit. Post on program account and school social media account. Put up posters around campus. The second thing we did is we put the content where it needed to be so that when you know that you need to do these things, then you know where to go to get those things. And then last but not least, we want to give you a time frame so that you would understand how long that task would take. And I literally thought about, you know, uh, uh, doing a school announcement. I factored in three minutes to walk to the front office. I factored in one minute to think through the, the other, to listen to the other now. I mean, I literally went into teacher mode. And these are real times for real tasks that will have a real impact. All together, I believe it comes out to an investment of four hours and uh, 11 minutes over two weeks to maximize your recruiting cycle. Now, we don't wanna just grow your program back to where it was. We wanna grow it 30% above that. And of the four hours and um, uh, nine minutes, uh, there are two 20 minute blocks and one 30 minute block that are the bulk of that. The rest of it is two and three minutes at a time. So now that you understand the way we structured it, it is a 12 day recruiting cycle. So the prep work we envisioned would be done the week before or the weekend before. And this takes you through Monday through Friday of the next week. And you get time off on Saturday and Sunday. So understanding that the very first thing you want to do is choose your date. Everything functions off that date. And not only does it function off this date in terms of when you need to do it and, um, and what's coming up, but it also backdates some of the previous tasks. So if you want to start on April 8th, then you need to order your banner on April on March 25th. You need to create and review your personalized web page on April 6th. It will not only set for what's coming forward, but what's in arrears. And then when you find something that is checked mark off, it means it should have already been done or is unattainable. Okay, so set that date and then you'll know what my schedule is. So you don't have to order a banner, a parent flyer, but we'd love for you to because we think it, it grows in th uh, the impact of your recruiting process, but we even tell you where to go to get it. Go to the PTO and the administration to get it. So knowing and understanding the way we structure it both horizontally and vertically, prep work and then day by day, I want to walk you through the two different sections, which is prep step and then execution and implementation. Now, knowing that your prep work is here, if you want to order a banner, that's, you would want to do that two weeks in advance. Everything else you need to do happens at some point in time prior to the actual execution of that of the, of the start of your actual recruitment process. And notice, once you've done it, we gray it out and we put a line through it. So you know that it's complete and you can focus on everything else that's in front of you. So real quick, order banners and flyers or parent cards. It's the only part of this process that isn't free. And we offer the parent cards and the flyers and the posters for free for you to print out if you so choose. So we give them away for free. They just won't be quite as cool looking. The second thing you're gonna to wanna to do is build your own personalized web page. 
That is critical because not only does it provide a high quality, high quality resource for kids to gather information, but they can take an oral skills test. They can actually choose their instrument, check their face structure and register. And it sends the test results and their registration directly to your inbox. It is an all-in-one recruitment, education, demonstration, assessment, and registration resource. I am telling you, there is nothing better in the landscape of this profession than that. Even if you start beginners in middle school, that's where you wanna go. And if you wanna create your own page, if you hasn't, haven't, that's the link to where you do it. The next thing you're going to do is upload all of your potential students to your enrollment tracker right here. So we've built it for you. You're going to set your enrollment goal. There's 200 fifth graders, and I want to get 180 of them involved in band or orchestra or choir. And by the way, these resources are equally applicable to band or orchestra as choir. Upload the entirety of what's possible. Go down to your, your registrar and say, can I get an Excel spreadsheet? I email the, the various fifth grade classes, say, can I get an Excel spreadsheet? List the student in so that you can track not just those that have enrolled, but more importantly, the kids that haven't enrolled. You want to download our parent card and promotional posters so that they're ready to go up. Download the Why Music Matters brochure so you can send that home or email us a PDF to one of your pre-written emails. Create an incentive uh, type registration process. Maybe it's you get a sticker, you get a you get a lollipop, you get a piece of candy. Anyone scoring higher than 80% on their oral skills test gets a Butterfinger. By the way, everyone scores higher than 80%. Some sort of, if 50% of you do it tonight, I'll bring ice cream bars to the entire class tomorrow. It doesn't have to be big. It just has to incentivize and make the game, make the activity more gamified and more fun. So that is the entirety of your prep cycle. Now, understanding all of that put together is about 32 minutes. 32 minutes of prep work, and you are ready to rock and roll. Ready to rock and roll. Again, applicable to band, choir, and orchestra, applicable to small school, middle school, um, or large school, applicable to inner city, or this works anywhere and you can use as much or as little of it as you want, but we've put it all there for you. Convenient, compact, all in one space, and complete everything. So now that we've done all our prep work, we spent our 35 minutes, now we're gonna look at the cycle. The very first cycle is a blurry of activity on day one. Number one, you're gonna print out the parent cards that you did over the weekend, you're gonna distribute them to every child. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to take the pre-written email that we've already written and you're going to send it home that night. Third thing you're going to do is you're going to post on your social media account and your school's social media account. We've already given you the content. And then you're going to walk up to the front and make an announcement on the, on the school announcements about today's the kickoff to signing up to be part of the music. And you're going to walk around and put uh, posters around campus. Now, the 30 minutes that I allocated to the cards includes sorting them out into five classrooms of 30, walking to each classroom's teacher, asking them if you can have a minute and pass them around to every child. This could be done in as little as five minutes, but I wanted to be fair about the time. If you take away the 30 minutes and or you do as a part of your prep, your entire first day is eight minutes of activities but you've created a flurry of activity on day one. You've got social media posts going out. You've got an email going out. You've got a backpack uh, flyer going out. You've got posters around campus going up. You've got an announcement on, on the school announcements. You've got something going up on the school marquee. You are omnipresent on day one, on day one. And you spent a total of eight minutes accomplishing that. So, on day two and every day moving forward, you're gonna to wanna to take all those registrations from your personalized website and start building your enrollment tracker. You're gonna start checking them off. Now, all the names should already be here. Now you're just gonna check off. Susie's gonna play and she's gonna play flute. Billy's gonna play and he's gonna play sax. And the beauty is once you enter them, notice it starts to turn green. 
and so that you know who you've actually registered and who you haven't. So every day, and by the way, not only is it real-time data, real-time data, but it's a little bit of an endorphin rush. You get to see your program growing right in front of your very eyes. So even though we only list it on day two, that you're gonna be tracking your enrollment and updating your enrollment target, you're gonna be doing this every single day so that you can see what's happening in real time. Then after day one, other than your daily enrollment tracker, you don't have anything for three more days. Now on day four, you're gonna do another announcement broadcast. We already wrote the script for you, by the way. And you're gonna do another social media post, which we already provided. And these are all built on landing pages in addition to your Google Doc. So you're gonna have access to these through really nice slick landing pages, but you're also gonna have quick access through these Google Docs that we built for you. Again, you go on to day five, all you do is update your enrollment tracker. We just give you a, fr a friendly reminder, it's been two days. And then you email all of the parents who haven't responded. You've gone in, you've given the suckers and the stickers to the kids who arrived on first. Um, and now on day five, you go to your enrollment tracker and you can sort by this field on a true false narrative, true as they registered, false as they haven't. And you literally can grab all the emails, copy and paste, and send it out to all the parents who haven't enrolled. If it's easier, you can take that second email and say, friendly reminder to those of you who haven't enrolled and email the entire fifth grade. And what you'll see is with each subsequent email that we wrote for you, they get shorter and shorter. So it's not something that is a burden to the parent. So you can either sort and email that way if you have access to that data, or you can do just a blanket email. The choice is yours to make but we wanna do a friendly touch base. It's now the end of week one. And we wanna make sure that we're reminding parents, you're at the midway point. What have you done? Have you registered? Have you taken the test? Have you looked at the instruments? And are you ready to go for next year? And you wanna make it like it's a club. You know, my favorite thing to do when I was a teacher, I'd say like, if I had something that was due, I would say, oh, that's right. Don't forget kids, the forms due tomorrow. I think there's only four or five I haven't received. So uh, anyway, if you're one of those four or five, send those in, have a great day. What I'm really saying is everyone but you has done it. Everyone but you is signed up for band. And, and all of a sudden, it may be 75% of the kids haven't done it, but they all think now, crap, I'm the only one that didn't do it. So you want to make it exclusive. Oh, everyone, we're so excited. It looks like next year's orchestra is going to be the biggest one ever. But don't forget, if you haven't signed up, it's not too late. We still can squeeze you in. Get that done tonight, tomorrow, this weekend then you have nothing for the weekend. So now you've gone five days and you've literally probably competed 60% of enrollment and taking away the, the prep work and assuming you, you just handed the teachers the flyers, you've spent a total of maybe 36 minutes and you've, you've not only started to build your band roster, but you, edu you educated every kid on what the instruments are. You educated every kid on what band and orchestra is. We have those videos. You educated every parent on why music matters. And you assessed every kid's oral, rhythmical, melodic skills. This is real education in real time that has real academic heft and merit. Even if they don't sign up for music, you've taught them. Any school that doesn't do this, any teacher that isn't willing to do this just simply isn't an educator because this really is education. It's beyond recruiting, it's educating. So we even had here, celebrate all your successes. We took it out because we wanted the list to be as short as possible, but you should celebrate all your successes, woohoo! You start um, day eight, Monday morning with your, your next social, your third and final uh, social media post. You update your enrollment tracker from the weekend and you send on day 10, which is Wednesday, of week two, you send your third and final email saying, here it is, you have 36 hours to register to be a part of the music. Otherwise, your child won't get out on the experience, will miss out on the experiences that every other child is getting. And you know, some parents have a lot on their mind and they're single parents, they need that reminder. And we wrote the emails very carefully. So the third one's very brief. And we give you the link to insert the URL to your website, your personalized website that you built that assesses and educates kids. And so that um, they can do it quickly and easily. You do your final announcement broadcast. 
you update on day 11, on day 12, your enrollment tracker. And then on day 12, you take the certificates that we um, printed out. And Andrew, I'm just gonna give you a quick note here. Uh, somehow that certificate uh, got deleted from this Google doc. If we could find that and post that in. Uh, we have pre-printed certificates for you. Um, Andrew, they're located in the recruitment roadmap and the document section. So Andrew is the brains behind Be Part of the Music. He's also manning the chat box and runs the webinars. Uh, he will take care of that for you before the end of this webinar. And if not, we'll upload that to our, um, our landing pages. So you hand out the certificates to everyone who registered and you're done. You not only recruited, but you educated parents and kids on not just what music is, but why music matters. A comprehensive, clear, customizable, and complete solution just for you. No high school stuff, no marching band stuff, no, nothing that, that, that isn't pertinent and relevant to you. Now you can, again, you can customize this and expand upon it, or you can use just elements. You can copy and paste the text as is, or you can trim it down. You can use more commercials and less gifts. You can order our, our order cust our, our banners and our, our other materials, or you can just use it as is. It's your job and it's your, only you know how to recruit your kids. We just wanted to give you everything you could possibly need because without you, Music dies for everybody and you don't get enough credit. You don't get enough support. You don't get enough resources and it's time for that to change. Recruitment gateway, start a student, change a life. And even if you had them just for one year in sixth grade or two years in fifth grade or sixth grade, you are changing the trajectory of their life even if you don't see it. And it's on me that I never told Larry Conrad that. It's on me that I didn't share with him that all my successes are because of him. And it's on me that I didn't tell him in time that he changed my life. And I hope that he knows that. But if he doesn't, that's on me. So understanding that, um, I'm just gonna share a few final thoughts with you and then we're gonna open up for some questions. Uh, So now that you know what the resources are, things to think about. Number one, when you choose that start date, be specific. So that's day one that you go out and hustle for kids. Now, if that's in August, that's fine. If you enter that date, we will deliver the content to you on August 1st. If it's in two months, we'll do two months. We will deliver the content on day one, but you will need to do the prep work prior to that. So that date, at the top of the upper left-hand corner will populate not only everything in your Google Doc, but it will also automate our email campaign to deliver things to you when you need them. You will get three emails over the 12 days from us, and they're designed to be informational, but also motivational, and just give you a little bit of cheerleader of you got this. Number two, set a daily reminder or alarm on your phone, on your computer, just to know that, oh, I need to check my Google Doc today to see what I need to do tomorrow. Make it a daily habit for 12 days. And just like everything, it takes some time to build up momentum, but momentum is what you will build up. And you will start to see the benefits of that on day four and day five. So set that daily reminder. And maybe you're different than me, but I get that endorphin hit when I, oh my, look, look, I lost three pounds or I shaved 30 seconds off my mile or I enrolled five more kids. And it, it will work. It will happen. Set third. Gamify, or I'm sorry, track your data and be as detailed as possible. Now, you don't need to be this granular, but one day I was looking at my dad when I was a high school director and I went, okay, here's my band numbers and here's how they've tracked over years and years. Here's my instruments, Here, here's how it's tracking. Here's my gender, here's my ethnicity. And that was the one I went, whoa. Now, I, like many of you taught in a Title I urban school that was highly diverse. and. We all like to take a little pride in it. You know, I teach a very challenged socioeconomic area, my kids, and, and I was proud that I did that. And 
what I realized when I really did a granular study of data was the school was basically 33% uh, white, 35% Hispanic, and about 32% uh, African American. And my band was 32% white, 35, uh, per, I'm sorry, 45% Hispanic. Well, good for me. And only about 12% African American. And I realized that yes, my band was diverse, but it was not as diverse as the school. And I had a problem. When you, when you gather your data, be granular about it. You know, if for nothing else than to study and see trends in your school, and you don't have to be as that, that great, but don't just say I've got 42 kids in band. What are their instruments? How does that track over last year? What is my gender makeup? And even why are all my flutes female? Is it something I'm doing? And one of the things you'll see when you show all the videos, we tried to fight gender bias. We have a female tuba player. We were very careful about that. That wasn't an accident. We wanted, we have a female, um, we have, uh, we have um, you know, uh, a female um, horn player. We tried to choose things that fought against gender stereotypes. And then last but not least, as I tripped over on the last time is gamify and involve the students and celebrate. You know, when kids join, put a sticker on them and, and give them a flyer and make a big deal on the announcements and have a contest, but you can involve students and the students. When we were doing a webinar, um, the, the day we did our recruitment roadmap, I got an email from a student, I mean, from a teacher who said, you're never going to guess what happened. And we included this in the recruitment roadmap webinar. A kid walked in and goes, hey, I used your flyer, Mr. Smith, and it worked. Got three more. High five. The kid got three more kids to join band in a passing period. And we immediately said, can you send us the flyer you hood up, head up? And we posted it uh, in our last webinar. If you use kids to engage kids and you gamify it, you will get more kids and make a big, Sally, Sally, everyone, she got three of her friends to join. Way to go, Sally. Here's a lollipop or a sticker or a certificate or whatever it is, but be specific with your start date. So you know the exact calendar of what needs to happen, not just during, but before. Set a daily reminder alarm. So for 12 days, you're checking it every day. Track your data and be as detailed as you can possibly be, not just for today, but for the future. Gamify the students and celebrate. And then last but not least, keep us in mind and stay in touch. If you have a question, email us, call us. You'll see my phone number in a second. And when we reach out and say, is it working? Did you grow by what percentage over last year? Then reach back. If nothing else, Andrew and I are responsive. We usually respond to emails within minutes, if not hours. It rarely, if ever, goes 24 hours. We take that personal because we feel like when we're talking, when you reach out to us, you're talking to us and we would never be so rude as to ignore you. We always respond. So if you're frustrated, if you have a question, if you blew up your Google Doc and can't find it, we're the people you reach out to. That is what we're here for. And you can reach us at the following address. Customizable, convenient, complete. Don't just keep this to yourself. Share with everyone, but this is where you get it. bpotm.org forward slash gateway. bpotm.org forward slash gateway. And I wanna show you that URL really quickly so you understand what you're going to see. I thought I had this already open. There we go. If you go to bpotm.org, this is what you're going to see. Be sure to scroll down and fill out this start date. If you don't fill out that start date, you will get an error message. And if you don't know when it's going to be generalized, it's in the, it's in the fall. Well, then put August 15th or August 1st, but you put your name and your school organization, your first name, your last name, your email address, and then a start date. That will take you to the next screen, which will then give you access to this Google Doc, which is everything that you will need, all ready to go in real time, customizable, complete, and convenient, because that's what we're here to do. So having said that, um, I'm going to uh, stop uh, talking and I'm going to open it up uh, to questions. Now you can submit your questions from uh, the chat box or you can turn on your mic and just ask your question. 
Uh, Andrew, I, is, before I open it up, is there anything that I might have missed in the presentation, any overarching um, uh, questions that occurred that need to be addressed? Yeah, just a couple things real quick. Uh, first of all, um, I, maybe it was just me. Um, I couldn't see the screen when you went to the uh, bpotm.org slash gateway. So we couldn't see that form that you talked about. Um, so I'll let you pull that up if you want. Um, everyone can see it if you just go to the, <laughs> the link right there, bpotm.org slash gateway. You'll be able to see it right away. Um, secondly, I want to um, just apologize for any inconvenience for any colleagues that you may, uh, that may have wanted to join today's uh, webinar. As soon as we started, it appeared that there was some kind of glitch and it maxed out the number of participants to only 100, which we have a license for far more than that. You guys know that because you come to the webinars and you see a lot more people there. So um, I was fielding emails for the first 25 minutes about people who couldn't get in. So if you have any of those colleagues, please express our apologies for that glitch um, and just know that the recording will be sent out uh, tomorrow and anyone that couldn't attend because of that issue will get to see the recording uh, first thing tomorrow. I did not know that, Andrew. I am sorry. And to all of our colleagues, except my apologies, I want you to know I double checked our registration yesterday, Andrew, and ensured that it was up to 500. I, it was one of the things I did yesterday. Yeah. So, um, just uh, seems to be a Zoom glitch. I, I tried troubleshooting on the spot, didn't seem to work. So anyway, just wanted to throw that out there, a public apology to anyone. Um, besides that, I don't see a lot of um, many questions at this point. So if anyone does have any questions, go ahead and add that to the chat. And Scott, I know you like to scroll through, so I'm sure you can start picking it up wherever you want. Yeah. and. Uh, uh... You know, Andrew always reminds me, these are some of the best parts of our webinars are the Q&A. So you can ask a question about anything. It doesn't have to be education related or recruitment and retention related. Um, uh, but just know you can ask anything. So first one, is everything ready to go if my start date is March 30th? It is ready to go as of tonight. Um, and you're going to want, if you want to order a banner, it is typically a two week turnaround time to get those to you. It's actually a little bit less, but I want to be safe. And if we're shipping you parent cards, we will have those to you usually within a week. So yes, everything is ready to go for you, Rob, assuming you approach it before March 15th, all the other things that you can download and click, you could actually start on March 29th and be ready for a March 30th start date. So is there any way to put two teacher names in, on emails of the years? Uh, I teach band and would like to be able to receive updates. Uh, there is no way at this exact time to do that. You would both have to sign up. You could still do a single unified Google Doc. So once you sign up and you get that URL, you'll, get a, you'll be able to copy it and drop it. Then you can add a second teacher so you can do it in real time together. But there's no way in the registration process at this time. Um, we do have a way when you sign up that you share the link so they can sign up, but that's what you would do um, for that uh, situation. Uh, someone asked, uh, let me get um, in a direct message. Do you think beginners should be performing in a winter concert if only nine lessons after they start? Uh, so I'll answer that question if someone else uh, would like to answer that. I think there's never a bad time to celebrate success. I mean, you acknowledge it isn't the Boston Pops, but I don't think you can celebrate. Do we only do we only do halftime shows after 35 rehearsals? Do we only give exams and pop quizzes after 35 classes? I think there's never a wrong time to celebrate success. And maybe you structure a different way to celebrate it. Maybe it's they all play four notes together and you high five them. But I think I think there's never a bad time. Uh, Dean uh, Danae, I hope I said that correct. Uh, teaching is a very large district and struggle with figuring out how to reach out to parents, kids, and elementaries. I have many elementary schools that choose to come to my middle school. It's a great question, Danae. Here's the deal. Over-communicate. Send it to your elementary and middle school teachers and ask them to send it out. Send it out as you believe it should be sent out. Put a banner up, a flyer up at every... You can't do it too much. You can't. Because the worst thing that happens if you do it too much is someone goes, oh, I'm just going to delete it. That's the worst thing for them. The worst thing for you is that kid doesn't get to experience music because they didn't know. I will put 50 flyers on their front door before I will give up because you're worried about over communicating. Over communicate. Apologize on the link, but over communicate. Um, Raymond asks, I already signed up. 
Uh, and then Bruce already asked, uh, for the roadmap, is there com a conflicting information? No, it's not. There is uh, a couple of additional features that we figured out uh, with this new uh, Google Doc, but what we tried to do was call everything out that wasn't relevant to you. So if you've already begun that process, you can stick with it or you can migrate over to this. Um, we just felt like we hadn't done enough for elementary teachers and we hadn't recognized their struggles and that we had so many materials and knowing that that many of you teach at four and five elementary schools, that it was an undue burden to do a large recruitment roadmap four or five times. And we wanted to make it more manageable for you. So this isn't ex exclusive or preclusive to that. It's just a better tool for that. And then lastly, I I'll share with you, and it was gonna be in the final slide, but it is relevant to that point, is it's a refinement for us. Uh, we've been very active in the last year. This is our 19th webinar, and we don't just do webinars to chat with people. Every time we do a webinar, we offer a release of new content, regardless. We're, we're not recycling the wheel. We are inventing new content, and Andrew and I are on a terror right now, and this is a refinement of something that we believed in in January, and it's the next step towards the iteration of what we're going to be announcing uh, in May, which will absolutely be the, the most significant thing Andrew and I have ever done since starting to be part of the music. So these are refinements, not only for you, but for us. Um, any way to expand dates if you're in a hybrid class? Absolutely. You go into that Google Doc and you change day two to day five. You just change it. That's it's the beauty of it. Yeah. Hey, let me uh, let me actually uh, share my screen real quick and I'll show how we can, um, there's actually kind of a neat way, kind of a hidden thing, but uh, Scott, can you see my, my uh, Google sheet here? I absolutely can. And credit to Andrew. Andrew's the one who built the Google doc. Yeah. So uh, the question is, can I expand the dates? Can I change the dates? You certainly could come in here and just adjust these however you want and change the number here. Um, but that might get a little complicated or confusing or Maybe it's too much work. So if you have a task here, let's take this one, announcement broadcast number three, and you want to extend that, and you can do this to any of these tasks. This is actually its own cell right here. So this one is its own cell. This looks like it's its own big cell. These are actually two different cells. And so what you can do is you can actually change just the day number, and it'll automatically change the calendar date. So I'll change this to day 10, and you'll see it automatically adjusted the date right here. If I change that back to eight, you see it goes back. And so you can literally configure these dates however you want and then let the uh, dates automatically change. And then, you know, if you want to do these in different orders too, that's completely fine. I would just recommend you come up here, highlight all this, and then uh, sort by date. That way it puts it in the, in the right chronological order. So uh, hopefully that answered that question. I do want to touch on one more thing, Scott, that you said, and, and we had, I had used this analogy when we were talking about this webinar a couple of weeks ago, and Scott called it a refinement. And when we looked at the roadmap, the recruitment uh, blueprint roadmap that we, um, that we put out uh, a month ago, our goal was how do we be as prescriptive as possible? How do we just give you the exact steps in the exact order? And I likened it to, if you've ever been to Ikea, bought a piece of furniture from Ikea, you open the boxes and here's a lot of furniture and you can, you know what it looks like when it's built, um, but you have all these pieces and parts in front of you. And so um, my analogy was it's like that instruction booklet that comes with a Ikea furniture and it gives you the step-by-step -step and it shows you where to put that piece and how to put it. And once you follow that instruction booklet, you have a beautiful piece of furniture in front of you. And so that is what this process is. It's it's a refinement of that roadmap. So it's it's pretty much the same thing. We just wanted to, to make it even easier for you is what that was. So back to you, Scott. So I obviously you can see why Andrew is just such a, an amazing guy. Well, you can't see because he won't turn his camera on. And every time I say his name, he finds me $100. Andrew, Andrew, Andrew. There you go, buddy. I owe you some money. So uh, there's another question. It was a great question. It said, how do I share this with my colleagues? Um, so I'm going to start a GoFundMe account so I can say Andrew's name more, just to be clear. How do I start? How do I share this with colleagues? Number one, please post it everywhere. Post it 
everywhere so that every colleague can have this. But don't do it by sharing your Google Doc. What we need you to do is go, just send them the link, bpotm.org forward slash gateway. That's it, bpotm.org, be part of the music.org, bpotm.org forward slash gateway. That way they can go through the registration process and choose their start date. If you just share the Google Doc, they won't get any of the automated emails from us. And that's really important. And then we won't know who they are and we won't be able to reach out in a month and say, hey, did it work? What worked? How did it work? What are your numbers? So please know that we're gonna come back to you and ask a favor in a little while. We're gonna say, did it work? What worked? And what were your numbers like? What kind of growth did you see? So bpotm.org, I'm sure uh, Andrew's already put it in the, in the chat box. Uh, they will get it, then they'll get that, those materials. Recruitment packs are currently sold out. Now that's the bad news. Everyone say boo, give me a thumbs down. Everyone come on, thumbs down, boo. Wow, that was harsh, Tim. You were really quick to do that. Wow, hurtful. Seriously, Tim, hurtful. Rob at least waited a second and Bill has a big head behind him so I didn't even pay attention to him. So that's a boo. What's a yay, what's a really big yay is that, um, is that we still have banners and we still have parent cards. And I think those are the two most important things, me personally. Now, what's a triple big yay is Andrew and I have an idea and Andrew and I have a plan. That doesn't mean it's gonna happen, but you're the first people to know this. We are working on a pathway, working on it, in which uh, recruitment packs will be free of charge moving forward at some point in time, uh, starting in the fall. You just heard that right, 100% free nationwide. So we have a boo, we're out of stock, we have a yay, the two best parts are in stock and we have a fingers crossed. Um, so are there any other questions? Uh, we know your time is valuable. Uh, <laughs> you know how teachers love free stuff, be prepared. <laughs> As if only teachers love free stuff. Um, I want to kind of close this webinar with uh, two things. Number one, we'd love for you to just drop in the chat box and rate this program on a one to 10. One being, I this is no use to me and it actually makes my life worse. And 10 being, you hit this so far out of the park, we'll never see the baseball again. Um, I would love that. Um, and the second thing is, uh, I see two questions. Number one, our documents are in Spanish, but uh, the, the videos aren't, but there's not a lot of talking on the videos. And uh, Andrew will answer the second question about should you have e uh, separate docs for separate schools? The answer is yes. It will make your life much easier. Um, last but not least, I meant when I said, when I said we don't celebrate you enough. Every student you start is not just a kid in a chair, another wrong note to be played or rhythm to be taught. Every student you start is a life to be changed. And you know that you're in music today because a music teacher changed your life. And by and large, you probably said thank you to one or two of them. But I know I didn't say thank you to my elementary band director, Larry Conrad. And he did change my life. And everything I did, everything I did after that class in fifth grade beginning percussion class was forever altered for the better. Not just my school, not just my high school friends, not just my collegiate experiences, not just my teaching experiences, but the way I raised my children and the woman I married were all forever altered because of Larry Conrad. You are making a difference. You are changing lives, even if, you don't see it till four or five years after they've left your building. And we want to help you help get more kids to be part of the music. So with that being said, if you need to reach out to me, I'm going to put, it was on the last slide, but there's no sense in going back to it. My phone number. That is my personal cell. And our email address it's not that I don't want to give you my personal email address. I'm happy to do that, 
but that email address goes to both Andrew and I. So one, if I'm on a plane or he's in a conference call and I'm with, one of us always grabs uh, emails instantly. And if you get a double email response, it's because we both responded. And, uh, but we're very thorough about that. So if you need to reach out, if you have a question, you have a concern, or you just want to let us know how it's going. I had one teacher call me about two weeks ago, gushing about the recruitment roadmap. And she was telling me um, how she used all the ideas and she was just giddy. And she even gave me an idea. She said, I told the kids if they, if we got a certain number of kids in band, we would be allowed to have a class pet. So they now have a class it's one of those little small hamsters. They have a class pet and they named it um, Beethoven. And I thought, what a great idea for an incentive. So if you have questions, um, reach out to us. If you just want to tell us how it's going, reach out to us. We want to hear from you because we live in a vacuum and you live in the real world. Um, and uh, that's, uh, that's all I got for you folks. Uh, thank you for all that you do for music education. You made it through a year the lights coming at the end of the tunnel. And uh, with that being said, uh, we ask you to have a wonderful, wonderful evening. I'll uh, stay in the chat box in case there's any other questions for a few four minutes, but that's the end of our content presentation. You're welcome, everyone. You are welcome. The llama enjoyed the presentation. I was worried about the llama, genuinely was. And the fact that he fits on your shoulder is a little concerning to me, but and you have a headless llama, which isn't creepy at all. I mean, it's only the head, so, you know. If it were a goat, I'd call the, the police, but a llama, I'm gonna let it go, John. Any other they questions before? <laughs> Say that again, John. I just said they are fun. They, they are fun. If you do, um, they can be mean too. They bite and they spit, don't they? They do. And uh, unfortunately for me, a lot of my <clears throat> a lot of my Hispanic students love love them everywhere. So I think that's probably going to be our uh, class pet uh, next year. So and do you really have a llama? Well, you know, like a little toy llama. Oh, okay. I thought I thought maybe you had, and some people have real llamas. I was I was just curious. Uh, that wouldn't work so well in the metro. Well, I, I wouldn't think so, but you know, uh, what do I know? I always tell my kids, my kids were asking for, dad, dad, we want to get a snake. Well, dad, dad, we want to get a fish. Dad, dad. And we have dogs. I'm a dog person. At the end of the day. I said, listen, you know why they call it a pet? Because you have to be able to pet it. You can't pet a snake. So no. And you can't pet a fish. So no. That's my rule. If you can't pet it, it ain't a pet. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> yeah. Well, if there's no more questions, um, March is Music in Our Schools Month. I'm curious if we're doing any pre-drafted emails that will be coming out to share. Um, we did do, we do our parent advocacy emails. Those go out at the first of every month. So our March, um, our March emails went out um, with all that content on March 1st. We do not have any additional content uh, slated for March other than the content that we pre-wrote for uh, our recruitment roadmap and for Musical Gateway. So we do have recruiting resources. Uh, Cindy asked about choir. So first of all, the structure will absolutely work for choir. We don't have the, the website and the videos for choir yet. And there are two reasons for that. One is we are right on the, cur uh, uh, the cusp of getting it done in the pandemic hit, uh, which ended all our funding. Uh, and the, the third reason was we're waiting for, a, a second reason was we're waiting for a face. And we were close to pentatonics. Um, because there's not really a mystery to solve about choir. It's not like you, we, you choose flute. A boy can't choose his instrument. Well, I'm a tenor. That's the way it is. Or I'm a soprano or I'm not or whatever it is. And we didn't feel there were any mysteries to be solved by choir. So we want to use choir as the vehicle to put a face to the program. And we were just about there when the pandemic hit. But the structure of the recruitment roadmap, all the posters, all the flyers say be part of the music. They don't say band, choir, or orchestra. So everything works except for the videos and the recruitment webpage, but you could use our middle school videos, which do have choir videos and our high school videos, which do have choir videos. Anything else? Going once, 
going twice. Is up, someone slipped one in. Damn, yeah, up, and Andrew answered it. Andrew answered it. By the way, if you're, if you're on here, uh, if you come up with a good idea, um, uh, if you want to join our team, reach out to us. Um, those parent advocacy newsletters were a team effort between um, Wendy Hart Higdens and Greg Scapolito and I. I wrote the high school stuff, Wendy wrote the middle school stuff, Greg wrote the elementary school stuff, and then we traded letters. They made mine less sarcastic and snarky, and I made theirs a little more snarky and sarcastic. But if you have an idea and you want to be a part of the Be Part of the Music team, reach out to us. Uh, we can't promise much in the way of, of uh, pay uh, because we don't get paid right now, but uh, we can promise you a lot of affection and, uh, and a fun time. We laugh a lot. Wendy and Greg and I laugh a lot. So I think that's it. Uh, I'm going to let everyone go home uh, and let Andrew get back to his dinner. I said it again. That's $400 for this webinar. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Take care. And don't forget, do whatever it takes to get more kids to be part of the music.